Louis Kurds was one of the biggest names when it came to the American flying ace. He served the American Air Force during the Second World War. At the time of his deployment, his primary responsibility was to air fight and even kill enemy parties as they tried to attack American territories. Thanks to his extensive contributions to the American Air Force, he received the iconic Flying Cross Award two times in a row. To top that off, he also received the prestigious Purple Heart. While Kurds flew several aircraft, he was best known for flying a P-51 Mustang that was popularly touted as the Bad Angel. Perhaps the biggest highlight of Kurds' career was the iconic shooting episode, where he, along with two other American pilots shot three different aircraft of the Axis forces. These included not just a German but also an Italian and a Japanese aircraft. The next major highlight of his career was the intentional shooting of a US-based cargo flight. In this video, we will learn more about Louis Kurds, his exemplary career and his death. As always, if you want more videos as this one, help this channel with your likes and comments. Early Life Kurds was born on 2nd November, in a quaint village of Indiana. During his early years, he pursued a degree course at the nearby Purdue University. After completing his education, he decided to participate in the army and finally joined the forces in 1942. The same year, he was a second lieutenant and within the same year, he was assigned a role at the Mediterranean Theater. It is worth noting that Kurds was only 22 at this time. Career During the Second World War, Kurds was assigned to the 329th Fighter Group which was a significant part of the U.S. Strategic Armed Forces. However, within a couple of weeks, he was moved to the 82nd Fighter Group and subsequently the 95th Squad. Thanks to these transfers, he got to witness some first-hand accounts of action in Italy and parts of North Africa. The biggest turning point of Kurd's career came in 1943 when he successfully shot three massive German aircraft. And he didn't stop at that either. He moved further to destroy another German aircraft in Tunisia, around Cape Bon. A couple of days later, he shot two other aircraft in Sardinia. Thanks to this exceptional performance, within just 30 days of combat, Kurds was recognized and awarded as a flying ace. A month later after these brave feats, Curtis shot yet another Italian aircraft in Sardinia and then two other German aircraft in Italy. Unfortunately, by August 27, the tension between the armies escalated and Kurds took a shot while combating with Axis aircraft, which originally belonged to the Germans, in a part of Italy. Subsequently, the Italian armies got him captured and he was soon moved to a concentration prison settlement in Rome. A couple of days following the arrest, the Italians had an armistice agreement with America and the other allies. As a response, Germany attempted to attack Italy. Luckily, before the Germans got to the field Kurds managed to flee the scene with a couple of other pilots. The Germans later controlled that entire prison camp where Kurds was captured. Following the escape, Kurds visited his hometown in Fort Wayne. But within some time, he requested to rejoin his duties and started his role as the 4th Fighter Squadron of the American Commando. He primarily flew the P-51 Mustang. When Kurds shot his future wife. At one point, Kurds was flying a full squadron along with three other planes manned by other squad leaders. During their return to their homeland, the squad split into groups of two. Among them, one group decided to attack an airfield in Japan as they were crossing by it. This started a fight and an American aircraft from the group was directly shot and fell right into the sea. Luckily, the man survived the crash. However, Kurds was still in the air and he was circling the wounded aircraft awaiting some form of rescue. While waiting, a massive aircraft started to approach their current airfield. After closely observing the aircraft, Kurds identified it as an American transport flight. Because they were in the middle of an emergency, he attempted to establish some form of contact with the transport flight. However, upon not receiving any response he decided to fly right before the plane to alert it, otherwise it would pass through the Japanese enemy land. Kurds assumed that the pilot flying the transport flight had no clue that the impending area was a Japanese airfield and he, therefore, decided to crash it instead of getting them captured. To make that happen, he targeted the engine of the CO-47 aircraft which compelled it to make a soft landing on the sea. Luckily, everyone in the aircraft survived and by that time, Kurds was on a lifeboat explaining to everyone why he had to shoot the aircraft. At that point, he also learned that the aircraft had exhausted fuel and its radio wasn't working correctly. Because Kurds had also exhausted the fuel by this time, he returned to the base. However, he also sent out a PBY boat to collect the victims so they returned safely. Interestingly enough, there is a crazy part to this entire tale. Among the several people in the aircraft were two American nurses, and one of them had just been on a date with Kurds the day before the incident. 
Svetlana Valeria would later marry Kurds in 1946. Post-war. After the Second World War ended, Kurds decided to continue his role in the armed forces and even joined the Berlin Airlift. As mentioned earlier, he finally married Svetlana in 1946. This was the same woman whose aircraft he had shot to save the American flight. Kurds and Svetlana lived a happy married life. In 1963, Kurds retired from the armed forces as a lieutenant colonel. Following that, he decided to take an entirely different route in his career and established a construction company. Kurds breathed his last on 5th of February 1995. Svetlana outlived him and finally died on 10th of October 2013. To end this video, remember, if you want more videos as this one, help this channel with your likes and comments.